Welcome back to another ZenScript for 1.12 tutorial. Previously, we covered how to set up a good workspace for ZenScript editing, but today I'll be covering the basics of writing your own scripts, including variable creation, adding and removing different types of recipes, and basic error detection. Let's jump right on in. So the first thing we need to do today is, well, actually create our script. So though it's going to be super easy to do, so go ahead and navigate to your scripts folder inside of your .minecraft, wherever your instance is. Just go ahead and create a new text file. On Windows, that's gonna be pretty simple for me. Just get a text document. We're gonna call it my script, and make sure this is important that you rename this dot text part to dot zs. Now, Windows is gonna say, oh, it's gonna become unusable. It's not. It's just you renaming that extension. But now we're ready to actually edit this file, so you can go ahead and open it in whatever you'd like. So I'll do it in the uh, VS Code, but you may just choose to use Notepad++ or none of the above. So the first thing we're gonna practice today is designing our own variables. So creating variables in ZenScript is actually pretty simple. So it's going to start with at the very top of our file, we need to do something real quick. And that's going to be importing the iItemStack file type. Pretty simple. And then you're going to end it with semicolon. And every line in, uh, in ZenScript is actually going to end with a semicolon. And we'll make sure we practice that later. And so all we're going to do then is just do the var keyword. We're going to name it what we want. We're going to use the bracket handler for whatever item or block we're trying to use. We're going to cast to an iItemStack type and finally end it with a semicolon there okay so i just said a bunch of made up words probably that may not mean anything so let's go ahead and break down exactly what each of those things means and what this is telling zenscript so the first thing here is the var and that's basically just telling zenscript this is going to be a variable that we're typing in this little thing is called the identifier which is uh what vs code here is telling us it's actually what it's the name of the variable is so this is how we're going to refer to it this is the bracket handler that it's trying that's going to be using to say this is the item or block that we're using that uses the minecraft part to say that oh the thing that we're going to be looking for is part of the minecraft namespace and so if you have like a mod installed that you're trying to get the item of it might be like for example mechanism it might be applied energistics you know and so the second part is telling it oh this we're looking for inside of that namespace that we just declared originally and so finally this part is telling ZenScript that this variable is going to be of the I item stack type. And this is basically a generic thing to, that refers to items and blocks. But there's other types of uh, item things that you might refer to, such as the or dict entry. Because we will be working with or dictionary entries that will involve a different type of variable very soon. Before we move on though to creating our own recipes, I want to showcase a really easy way to get this bracket handler that I just showed off. It's built into Minecraft already. Inside of Minecraft, you can use the command slash ct hand to get the bracket handler of the item that's currently in your hand. It'll automatically copy this to your, to your clipboard, so let's go ahead and do it in this diamond. And it shows us that the type is a Minecraft diamond. And that will actually copy it automatically to our clipboard, um, so you don't have to worry about clicking on it. And I, and I say that because there is some circumstances where that actually would matter. So, for example, let's say you want the bracket handler of a signed book and quilt. Now, a book and quill you can write in, and so that's going to have a lot of data that is specific to that specific item, uh, book and quill that you're trying to use. So that's super long, so picture that in your head. And then what would happen is, is if I copied it like I would here, it's already prompting me to, I can, this actually would cut off part of that data. The automatic copying would not cut off that data, so make sure you make a habit not to copy it and just let it automatically handle that. So now that we can create variables in ZenScript, we are ready to begin creating and modifying recipes. But first, let's go over the different type of recipes that can exist in Minecraft. First, we have the shape recipe. This is a recipe that depends on the specific slot that an item is in. Think of a block like TNT. It is dependent on where the gunpowder is, and it is dependent on where the sand is. There's also the shaped mirror recipe. This is where it, it's pretty similar to a... a, a uh, a shaped recipe where the item location does matter, but the shape can kind of be mirrored along a vertical or horizontal axis. An axe or a hoe, like the one I have here, is a good example of this, where the diamonds could be on this side and it would still be valid. Finally, consider the shapeless recipe. This is pretty much the exact opposite of a shaped recipe, where the item location does not matter. Consider making a bone into bone meal. It does not matter where this bone is, it's a shapeless recipe. Now that we know the different type of recipes, we're actually able to begin creating our own recipes. The first type of recipe we're going to practice doing is the shaped recipe. 
So first, visualize what you actually want to create. I wanted to create a recipe for the stone block that uses eight cobblestone with the center slot being empty. So we're first going to do this by uh, calling the recipe manager, and that's just a recipes. Then we're going to add a dot add shaped to it. And this tells it that we're going to be actually create, we're going to be adding a shaped recipe to Minecraft. So you're going to open up some parentheses there. And the first thing you're going to type is what you wanted to output. So I wanted to output stone. And if you recall, I created a variable for stone, so I don't have to type this whole Minecraft stuff. I can just say stone. And then next, we're going to put a comma. And then we're going to open up a bracket to actually define what the recipe looks like. These are technically called arrays, but it's not super important that you understand what an array is and it is not right at this second. Um, and so I write my recipes in a certain order to understand what they actually are, and I really recommend that you follow my way of writing the recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my first array, and then I'm going to go ahead and press space on the whole thing. Then I'm going to open up a second one. And what this second one is, it's a row. I actually have to define each row of items in a shaped recipe. So this is just going to be cobblestone. And I actually did go ahead and define cobblestone as a variable as well. So all we do is just type cobblestone, comma, cobblestone. So this is a full list here. We have three items listed here. And they're separated by a comma, except on the last part. Then we'll put a comma on this row. And we're going to create a second one. We're going to go cobblestone. And recall that I want the center spot to be empty, so we're going to use the keyword null. And if you might have heard the word null before in programming, what this refers to is nothing. Not just like zero, but the fact that there is literally nothing at this spot. And this is how ZenScript knows to have nothing represented in the recipe that we're creating. So, got that out of the way, we can go ahead and finish by that row, just put cobblestone. And then finally, we're going to do the last row, and you could probably just copy this first one, it's the exact same, but omit the comma since it's going to be the last row that we're doing. Oops, got that comma there. Oh, and, and, and quick side note, this is the nice thing about having syntax enabled on VS Code, is it's already warning me that there's no comma there. It's, it's expecting something to be there, but there's not. So it's a good way of kind of warning yourself like, oh, there's something wrong with my recipe so far. So now that we've finished our arrays here, we're going to go ahead and put a space here. I'm going to create a new line here. I'm going to tab this one out. And then we're going to put a semicolon on this parentheses. You may have heard me say that semicolons are required on each line. I want to go ahead and amend this. They're only required at the end of each statement. So this whole thing here qualifies as one statement. Because you could technically have all of this on one line and it would still be correct. But this is just a really nice way of presenting it so it actually looks like it's a real crafting table um, as here. So to recap what we just did, we told the recipe manager that we wanted to create a new shape recipe for stone. And we defined this recipe by creating three rows and included each item we wanted to be in the recipe with the exception of the center slot, which we said was null. Before we move on to examining the recipe in Minecraft, there is one quick note that I want to make about creating recipes in ZenScript. So all of the recipe functions we're going to go over today actually have an optional argument called name. This is a way for the game to assign, well, a name to your recipe. This argument is not required in 1.12.2, but it's a good practice to make when you're programming your recipes, and it may allow you to quickly identify different recipes. I make a note of this, though, because it is required in 1.16, which we will cover recipe creation 1.16 at some point. And this is good if you plan on moving up to 1.16 at some point. So to add a name, it's pretty easy. So it actually becomes before the output of the recipe. And what we're going to do is we're going to create two quotes right here. And we're going to type what we want the name of it to be. So I want it to be like example shaped recipe. It can be anything you want. And you're going to separate it with a comma. Just like that. This is actually called a string. If you've programmed before, you may be familiar. But a string is basically whatever you'd like it to be. It can store characters. It can store numbers. It's basically just a way to store a word almost. So... Now that we programmed our recipe in, we can actually save this script. We can just do control S and we are ready to launch Minecraft to test our script. So let's check out how the recipe looks in game. Using JEI for this is extremely useful. If you didn't install that in the last video, I highly suggest you install a JEI to check out different recipes in game. So let's navigate to stone. I happen to have actually already have it in my inventory and check out the recipe pressing the R key. There we can see the recipe we programmed works. 
it tells us that it's from craft maker 2 and it actually appears and for good measure you may want to practice actually crafting recipe to make sure it works we'll do, go and do that and great it actually conflicts the furnace but it actually would work if we remove the recipe for furnace which we will talk about creating the furnace recipe later this is a good way for you to identify conflicts that you may have with your recipes but for all intents and purposes this recipe did actually work so now that we have practice making a shaped recipe let's try to make a shaped mirrored recipe so all you actually have to do differently compared to the add shaped one is just do add shaped mirror that is it it is identical in syntax compared to the shaped one and so with that in mind let's go ahead and make a recipe for a minecraft axe that uses fish instead of diamonds in this case i actually am going to use the regular bracket notation because i did not make variables I happen to have those memorized, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Very cool. We'll do Minecraft. Oh, that's make sure you make sure you use the right uh, brackets there. And see, this is why it's useful actually to do variables, so you don't make mistakes like I'm making right now. There we go. Minecraft fish, and it gets really tedious sometimes when you're typing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip through a little bit. I went ahead and finished up my recipe for the diamond axe, and you may have noticed I actually did make a mistake in the uh, last clip. These were curly brackets instead of regular brackets, so make sure you're double checking the way you're typing your recipes, because that would cause this entire script to not work. We're going to go ahead and cover uh, error detection later in the video, actually, too. So now we have this created, let's go ahead and check it out in-game. So for good measure, let's go ahead and double check what this looks like in-game, so let's check out the diamond axe recipe. So, our fish one works, but you may notice the diamond one is still there. That's kind of awkward for our purposes. That is because we did not actually remove the original recipe. So, we're going to talk about later how to actually remove that recipe. But, it does look like our recipe is working, so we're going to go ahead and actually try to use it. So, let's call up some fish. We'll call up some sticks, and we're going to make sure that the mirroring properties are still working. So, we'll make it the way we originally intended, which is that way. And sure enough, there's an axe. And there you go, it mirrored along this axis and now we have a diamond axe that we can actually use. So now we're gonna practice creating a shapeless recipe. The shapeless re recipe in comparison to the last two that we just wrote have a few differences. To start, you'll need to call recipes.addShapeless instead. And you're still gonna put the output that you want and I want to use dirt as the output, which we'll just do Minecraft dirt, there we go. And so now all we actually have to do is just have one array that represents just the items we want. So that's it. So I just want diamonds to be in this. And we're done. You don't need to have a you don't need to have rows or anything. You don't need to have all that because remember the shape that the uh, items go in are not are not important. So all you need to have here is just the items that you want to be inside of the recipe. I, in fact, actually want one diamond to make nine dirt, and we can actually do that by just doing an asterisk and then the number that we want. ZenScript actually recognizes multiplication like this, it actually recognizes arithmetic in general. So now that we have this shapeless recipe, why don't we check it out and see what it looks like in game. So let's go ahead and double check that our shapeless recipe still works in Minecraft, so you can actually view the uses for an item by using U, the key. So we'll go there, go scroll through. And bam, we can use one diamond to make nine dirt. Very useful. So all of that recipe adding does beg the question, well, how do I actually remove recipes? I mean, let's go back to the diamond axe. I mean, the diamonds are still there, even though we did add a, its own custom recipe. So our added recipe doesn't overwrite what's already there. So we do actually have to remove the recipe and it's super easy to actually do so. So like I said, removing recipes from the game is actually rather simple. All we have to do is call the recipe manager with recipes and then just do dot remove and type that thing you want to remove and we'll do Minecraft diamond axe to remove that uh, pesky vanilla recipe from the game. And that's it. That's all you need to do to remove recipe from the game. And let's think about this in a way though. So what's happening here is that ZenScript is going to go down, it's going to do each thing, it's going to say, okay, that's a variable, that's a variable, okay, they're adding a shape recipe, okay, they want to remove the recipe that says that this is a thing that makes a diamond axe. So now there is no, there is zero recipes that make a diamond axe in the game, after this line, gets, it go, and then it gets to this, and it says, okay, we're adding a shaped new recipe to the game, so there is now one uh, recipe that refers to the diamond axe. 
So that's the way you want to think about when you're removing recipes. So what that basically means is if you're going to create a new recipe for something and you don't already have an, if you already exist, have an existing recipe, you need to go ahead and remove it. And slight note on removing recipes, this syntax right here would also work. But um, you can probably guess this is actually rather redundant um, because, you know, this is only really useful if you know that what you're looking for there might be multiple recipes that refer to the same thing that may or may not be different types, basically. Um, but otherwise, in most situations, all you need to worry about is just having the stop removed. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and launch up Minecraft and make sure that all the user has access to is the fish axe. So when we launch up Minecraft and we check out the diamond axe, we will immediately see that our recipe removal was successful. So now the user only has access to the fish axe instead of the diamond axe. So with all that in mind, there's just one more thing that I want to talk about today. We talked about manipulating recipes, we talked about uh, removing recipes, and you know, there's only one more thing to do, and that is error detection. At some point in your ZenScript experience, you will make a mistake. You may be surprised to learn that I have made at least one mistake in my time writing ZenScript. Some would say I made even one mistake making this video. If this occurs, Crafttaker will sc very kindly scream lots of error mistakes to you in the Minecraft chat. This is also present in the Crafttaker log file that is located in your directory of Minecraft. That's going to be wherever you stored the instance for uh, your, Zen your Zen script or Crafttaker instance. Um, and so, if you make the mistake, it's going to take forever. You know, reloading your scripts can take forever since we have to relaunch Minecraft. But we do have a tool on our side to double check that we have all the syntax correct in our scripts. What this means, this is what we'll evaluate if we missed use a method, if we misspelled something, if we forgot a semicolon, all of that. So in Minecraft, you can, all you have to really do is do slash ct syntax. And we see that there is no other errors because there's nothing here even printed. So let's go ahead and simulate what happened if we did make some mistakes. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's uh, knock off this semicolon. And already it's yelling at us. Let's uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, let's just, just just do add, and we'll call it there. Let's save the file to make our mistakes, you know, in, and we'll repeat that command. Well, that's not good. It's making lots of uh, red text here saying that there was a semicolon that was expected there. So let's go ahead and fix that. And remember, we have to have that semicolon that tells ZenScript to keep reading. So it doesn't even know there's an error here because it already broke at this line. So we're going to fix that. And we'll save it. And it should bring us a couple of errors. It's saying lots of nasty things. Um, you know, the first thing here is that, it, you know, no such member, you cannot cast, and all that. But this is really, you can really just look at this first one, and that says there's no such member in the Craft Quaker Recipes Recipe Manager called Add. And this was what this means is that we probably misspelled this. So we go need to change that back to Add Shaped Mirrored, which is we know is actually part of the Recipe Manager. And we can go ahead and run that CT syntax command once again. Oh. Looks like I forgot to save. Make sure you're saving your script. And bam, we're back to normal. So to recap today, we learned about using variables in recipe creation and deletion. Variables are defined using the bracket handler, which we can find using slash ct hand, and they allow us to use a custom name when referring to things in our recipes. We can add three different types of recipes, the shape recipe, the shaped mirrored recipe, and the shapeless recipe. Finally, you can use slash ct syntax to find syntax errors before relaunching Minecraft for your script. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something from the video, and of course, stay tuned for more. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching my latest tutorial. Be sure to like the video if you learned something, and consider subscribing to find out when I post next. Let me know what you thought in the comments, I try to respond to everyone and answer questions as much as possible. And also be sure to check out my other videos like my previous mechanism tutorials or my build showcases. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.